in. Good day, John Tree. We are carrying over PO24 part two. We did the first proof on Friday, um, and uh, we're just going to keep on keeping on with those. Okay. Um, remember what we're looking for. Our proof has to end with one of these five things side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle or HL. So the strategy that we used on Friday with that first proof was we took a look at what we have, right? What are we being given? It turns out we were being given two sides. So based on that, we immediately eliminated angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, because both of those only involve using one side. If we're given two sides, let's focus on one of the two theorems that includes two sides, right? It just makes sense. Then, because we didn't have any information about right angles, we eliminated HL as well. And that left us with side, 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 or side, angle, side. We used the reflexive property to prove that that side was congruent to itself, thus giving us three sides, thus giving us side, side, side as a final proving statement. That's the thought process, much slower than that. That's the thought process that we're going to be using, right, for the rest of these. So, let's go. Start by making our statement reason table. And what is statement number one? While you write it, I am going to calibrate because my pen's a little bit off. Okay. Uh, the given statement is segment VX is congruent to XY. Okay. X is W is congruent to Y, Z. And X, W is parallel to Y, Z. Okay? And all three of those things are given. You don't have to write them vertically like I did. I just didn't have quite enough space to... Uh, I'd have to kind of scrunch them a little bit. So if you can write them horizontally, if you can fit them, do it. But they can all go under that first step because all that information is given. Okay? Now, let's look at what we're told. Look at what we know. Nothing's marked here like it was on the first one. So let's mark this up a little bit. We're told that Vx is congruent to Xy. What piece did we just get here? A side. Okay? We got one side, all right? We're then told that XW is congruent to YZ. Here's XW, here's YZ. What were we just given here? Another side. Okay, hold up. So right here, we're given two sides. Again, we can safely eliminate angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. They don't look like right triangles. Again, we can never assume. But we're not given any information about angle measures, so we're going to limit that to. We're, again, kind of boxing ourselves into one of those two pieces there. Okay? That's how you need to start these proofs. That's the thought process. What am I being told? What pieces do I have? Where do I go from here? We can cross off angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, because each of those involve only one side. We already have two of them. I cross off HL because, once again, we're not given any information about angle measures. In order to use HL, we have to know we have a right triangle, which we're not told. We don't know anything's 90 degrees, okay? So we can safely eliminate that one as well. Arlene. Second warning is for each of you. Stop talking. Go ahead. And at least two of them are congruent. So then the third one must be congruent as well. If they're congruent triangles, which you have not proven yet, right? Once we know they're congruent triangles, yes, all three sides have to be congruent. But we use these to prove triangles are congruent. 
right? So we can't use side, side, side to say the third side is congruent. If we know the third side is congruent, then we can use side, side, side. They're not an if and only if type of thing, okay? Well, we're not done because we only have two of the pizzas. We have to get a third to say the triangles are congruent. Once we get the third, then we are done. Kylie, what do you think? So let's kind of run with that a little bit, okay? We didn't mark, mark this part, but we do know that xw is parallel to yz, okay? Now, Kylie is kind of leading us on the path of, of angles that would be, be congruent. Let's just kind of go with this a little bit. If we were to use side angle side, which angle would we need? Well, there's multiple angle X's, right? There's, there's, uh, there's three angle X's, technically. So which of those angle X's would we need? Here's where you want to label the angle using three letters with X as the vertex. What would that be? VXW, right? We want this angle here for side angle side. And we would have to prove that's congruent to angle Y down here. And here we can say angle Y because there's only one angle there. But how can we say that those two angles are congruent? Ellen? Not because of that, unfortunately. Uh, if the angle's the same, they would have the same slope. Oh, they are parallel. Let's work with that parallel a little bit here. What do we what do we learn early in the unit? Think PO20 about parallel lines and angles. Arlene? They don't cross Parallel lines don't intersect. Kylie? Trans uh, they transversal. transversal. Because these are our two parallel lines here, VY serves as a transversal that connects our two parallel lines. So that gets us thinking about corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior. If we have a transversal that intersects two parallel lines, what's the relationship of the two angles that I've marked there, Christopher? They're corresponding. They're the same location, right? They're both that kind of upper right section of the vertex. Do you see how they correspond there? You know, it, it, it might be easier if we if we um, extended these sides out a little bit. You know, but uh, B Y is a transversal connecting W X and Z Y, making those angles corresponding. So, step two, we can say that angle V X W is congruent to angle X Y Z. Angle VXW, the angles that I've marked up there, VXW is congruent to angle XYZ because of corresponding angles. Rarely are you ever given something that you're not going to use, right? So that, that third given section here where it says those two parallel lines, you're probably going to be using that. Okay, so then you have to look at, okay, wh why would they give me parallel Lines. Well, what do we know about parallel lines? Oh, corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, all those different things. Okay. We now have our third piece here, and it's an angle. Happens to be the angle that's in between our congruent sides. So step three, we can say that triangle VXW is congruent to triangle XYZ because of side, angle, side. Kylie. Um, no, we get a little bit longer than three steps. I think the most that we get is like seven. Um, most of them will be between the four and five range. Okay. 
But again, one of those four, one of those five is the given. The other one is the proving statement. It's that middle two or three that you got to kind of figure out. Um, but uh, yeah, questions on what we on what we did did here. Now is the time to stop and ask if you've got questions. Damien. So you got the angle by the line. Yes. Correct. Yep. We dug into our toolbox. We said, I've got parallel lines. I've got a transversal. What do I see here? Right? We pulled out the corresponding angles postulate. No cap. All right, here we go. Let's go on. Ooh. Ooh, this looks fun. Okay, this looks fun. Given D is the midpoint of AC, let's start with our statements reason table. I confused myself making an, an, an R there. Hold on, I gotta redo that. Okay, uh, first statement D is midpoint of AC, right? And we know that because. It is given. Okay. Now we actually have another piece of given information here that's not given to us in a statement, but it's given to us in the diagram. What is that, Beckman? What does that little box tell us? It's a right triangle, okay, but it's a right angle. So step two, nope. Angle BDC is a right angle, and we're not going to put given for this one because it wasn't given to us in a statement. It was marked in the diagram. Okay, so this introduces another way that information might be provided for you. It could be marked, right? So you might have a given statement, you might have a marked statement if there's something that's marked in the triangle that is uh, not explicitly stated in the statement. All right, Anthony. Sure, it'll cost you a pass, but sure. Um, we've done proofs before that opened a given statement with a midpoint. What did we do in that one? If, you, if you're not sure, flip back to PO 16. You were told that something's a midpoint. What did we do with that information? Yeah. Okay. More than that, that's kind of the definition, right? Arlene? Okay, except it's not a line, right? It's a segment. So we have to label it segment AD is congruent to segments, and I have to make sure I do my order correctly here. We have to put CD, okay? Because we're starting from the, from the, the acute angle AD. We have to start from the acute angle C, go to D. So AD is congruent to CD, and we know that because that is the definition of midpoint. Okay. What did we just find here? What did we just get? We got a side. Okay? Got a side. What else can we do? Yeah. And actually, that would be BD to BD, right? Because it's both starting from the acute angle and down to the right angle. Okay? So, step four BD is congruent to BD. And why was that, Christopher? reflexive property something is congruent to itself we've got our second piece here and it is a side another side so either again we could rule out angle side angle that's got only one side we've got two of them we can rule out angle angle side we're not going to rule out hl because we do have right triangles here okay um, but essentially we're we're looking for we have this congruent to itself, 
we have those two sides congruent as well. We're either looking for A, B, and B, C, or we're looking for angle B, D, C, and angle B, D, A. What do you think, Damien? Whatever you want. We're, we're, I'll kind of leave it open here. There is no it looks like it theorem. There is no it looks like it theorem. I don't disagree, but unfortunately... Yeah. We don't have that as our disposal. Claire, what do you think? Well, we see the right angles there, but we have not yet stated that the two right angles are congruent. Okay. In fact, we haven't even stated that this other side here is a right angle. How do we do? How do we do that? Not HL. HL is what we use to say the triangles are congruent. We're not there yet. We're inching there, Sophie. Well, we can only say that BDA is congruent to BDC if we know it's a right angle. We do not know it's a right angle yet. We can only use that if we have parallel lines, which don't have that stated. Kylie? Okay. Our next step is to state that BDA is a right angle, but what postular theorem allows us to say that? Again, we know this is a segment because we're told. We know we've got one right angle there because it's marked. What allows us to say the other half of that is a right angle as well? You're so excited, I can't. Not reflexive because it's not the same thing. Beckman? We can use that once we know it's a right angle. We're still in the process of proving it's a right angle. Noah? Yeah, linear linear <laughs> pair postulate. <laughs> the LPP. Sorry, Ellen. Sorry, sorry. I, I No, I didn't intentionally set up. I was not. Oh, no. I was calling on people who usually don't raise their hands. That's what I was trying to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, we only have about three minutes left. I want to get through this, so let's check. Let's go back. Okay, so now that we've determined that BDA and BDC are right angles, Ellen? Oh, okay. Lisa? No! We don't have our third piece yet. We know they're both right angles, but we have not stated their congruence. Claire? Angle BDC is congruent to angle BDA. Our two right angles are congruent because? Right angle congruence theorem. Someone who studies their postulates and theorems. Okay. Now we have our third part, and it is an angle. Right? So we have a side, a side, we have an angle. How can we manipulate those? What's the order? I'll mark the angles congruent down here. What do we what do we have? Ellen? Side. <laughs> yes, seventh step. We can say that A B D it's not HL. Why is it not HL here? Will I fix my, my whoopsie do? Oh, 
Why is this not H H L here? Noah. The angles are between the two sides. Do we have the hypotenuse? No. Right? That's what you need for HL. As Ellen correctly said, it is side angle side. Okay? And we've now proven that the two triangles are congruent. Okay? You need to be annoyingly meticulous when doing proofs. Right? Because everything needs to be stated exactly. We took two steps just to say those right angles are congruent. Joey, sit flat, please. We took two steps just to say those right triangles, those right angles are congruent because in proofs you have to. Annoyingly meticulous. All right. No homework for tomorrow. That's how you math.